Hey guys, it's Spiros from The Self-Help Photographer. Today we're talking about ISO. So do you remember going to the grocery store to buy film and you see 200 and 400 and 800 and 1600 and I don't know about you but when I was buying film and when I didn't know what I was doing I thought a bigger number meant better film. A bigger number didn't mean better film. What a bigger number meant was more light sensitivity and this is what ISO controls. The light sensitivity refers to how much of the light that comes into the camera is actually recorded for your image. Not all of it is. See, when you take a photo, you've got light coming into the camera. And some of that light comes into the camera, hits the camera sensor, and bounces off without ever being recorded. This is lost light. Now, do you remember when we talked about blurry photos? We get blurry photos when the camera or the subject moves before the camera is finished recording the image. By changing the ISO setting, you can change how much of that light coming into the camera is captured. So if you're in a low light situation and you need more light, you can turn up the sensitivity to capture more of that light. Capturing more of that light allows you to use a faster shutter speed, and a faster shutter speed allows you to finish taking the picture before the camera or the subject moves on you. Alright, let's learn how to change this on our cameras. So grab your cameras and what you're looking for is a button that says ISO. Now this is going to be in various different places uh, depending on your camera. If you have a point and shoot style camera, you may have to push the function button in order to bring up a function list that would include the ISO setting. Now on this scale here, you see how the ISO changes. It starts at 100, then it doubles to 200, then 4, 8, and 1600. Some cameras may have 3200, 6400, even 12800. I've already told you that the lower the number, the less sensitivity, and the higher the number, the more sensitivity. But what you need to understand is how it changes from setting to setting. When you go from 100 to 200, you double the amount of light that the camera is going to receive and capture. And if you go from 200 to 400, you double it again. So each step up, just like the numbers show you, doubles the amount of light that you capture. And when you go in the opposite direction, going back down, each time you cut it in half. So when you go from 400 to 200, you're going to capture half as much light. Here's an example of how you would use ISO. Let's say you're at a party and you want to take some pictures. Parties are notoriously badly lit and you want to get photos that aren't blurry. What can you do? Well, we've already learned that you can open up your aperture as wide as possible, but that might not be enough to get you a fast enough shutter speed. So the second thing you can do is turn your ISO setting up to create more light sensitivity. The more light you can capture, the faster the shutter speed. So in low light situations, turn your ISO up to create more sensitivity. And in daylight situations or bright light situations, turn your ISO setting down. All right, we're just about done here, but we've got two more things that you need to know. The first thing is that these settings that I'm teaching you about, aperture, ISO, and some of the stuff we're going to go on into the future with, don't change back after you've taken a picture. When you change your ISO, it stays there until you change it to a different setting. The other thing you need to know about is noise. Noise is kind of like film grain. So here is an example of a low ISO shot. And here is an example of a high ISO shot. Side by side, it's the exact same picture. The main difference is the noise. The thing you need to know is that noise increases the higher your ISO setting. Now, noise isn't always a bad thing. It's just something that you need to be aware of happening in your pictures. Some people are going to say, oh, no, you can't ever go above such and such ISO because you're going to get noise and your picture is going to be poor quality and that kind of thing. You know, that's a bunch of hooey. I would rather take a noisy picture at a high ISO than not get a picture at all if it's something that's important to me. All right, that's all I got for you today. Next week, we're going back to Aperture because we barely scratched the surface of it with the last video. Now, get out there and take some damn pictures. Play with the ISO setting. Don't forget to like this video before you go. I'll see you next time.